Thursday. It is the football program that really gets the brunt of the sanctions. Now, the University of Florida recognizes that these penalties are within the range of those that the NCAA may impose and has imposed in other cases. But it's also true that our university is having some difficulty in accepting with good grace and charm the penalty that impacts our current football players and coaches for events in which they had no involvement and no culpability. University President Dr. John Lombardi reacting on Thursday and understandably had football coach Steve Spurrier was a little bit more upset even and I guess uh, Jim Yarborough you, you, you're thinking about Steve Spurrier and his football players and, and what their thoughts might be. Well David it's much more personal to the coach and the players you know their hopes and dreams were built around a championship season going to a major bowl game and that's been taken away from them so you know they're extremely disappointed everyone associated with the program here is saddened but uh, these kids are more angry I think than disappointed right now and I think they're going to play with a vengeance all season long. So you think that uh, it could be positive for results of this afternoon? Well I really do I think the intensity is going to be much greater on Saturday afternoon because these kids are playing like every game is their last well today it's the Furman Paladins providing the opposition uh, the number one ranked team in one double-a in college football coming into this week's uh, game and you can see right there how effective this program has been through the 1980s David they have so much to be proud of uh, with their tradition uh, in the 80s and uh, they're playing a division one program uh, here obviously the University of Florida they played Clemson last year but uh, I think they might be pointing towards this ball game They've had some success against 1A teams in the 1980s. I think they scored four victories over uh, the top division ball clubs in the 1980s. As far as the Florida Gators are concerned, well, uh, Coach Steve Spurrier has got to be pleased about just about everything on the football team. But I have a feeling he would like to get the running game going a little bit more this afternoon. Yeah, I think that's true. I think uh, they're a little disappointed with the running game. Matter of fact, I think Eric Rett is going to start this afternoon. Willie McClendon is going to see some backup duty. Uh, the passing game has been fantastic. Steve Spurrier, notorious for his ability to throw the football uh, but he was very proud of his ability to run the football too he really thinks they can do either one but so far this year a little problem running the football so maybe they'll concentrate on that this afternoon two undefeated teams will kick it off at Florida Field when we come back the Florida Gators take the field another sellout crowd are very near it this afternoon in Gainesville week number three in the college football season for the Florida Gators I have scored impressive victories over Oklahoma State 50 to 7 two weekends ago here in Gainesville and then last week's 17 to 13 thriller over the Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. Furman is 3 and 0. The Paladins have defeated the South Carolina State Presbyterian College and last week's Southern Conference rival Tennessee Chattanooga in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our sideline man Steve Babick standing by on the field. Let's check in with Steve. Steve? Thanks, David. I had a chance to talk to place kicker Arden Krzyzewski in the pregame warm-ups, and I said, Arden, how's the team's mood right now? You've had a couple days since the announcement about the NCAA. How do you guys feel? And he said, be honest, Steve, we're still mad. So I said, Arden, how's that going to affect today's game? And he said, our guys are ready to play. I think we're going to play very well. You know, it's fortunate that the Gators have these next three games here at home because I think the reception here as the team came out was great, and I think the team needs that support of the home crowd. So I look for a good game today against the Furman team. Back upstairs. Thank you, Steve. It's a little bit warm on the field. If you couldn't already tell from the perspiration on Steve Babbick's face, the temperature on the field unofficially is just over 100 degrees, and that's with the new natural grass playing surface. And uh, generally speaking, a beautiful September afternoon and one that you would somewhat expect this time of year in North Central Florida. These two ball clubs have met on the football field seven times prior to this afternoon's game. But Florida has won the last five meetings between the two teams. Furman has not beaten Florida since they wore leather helmets in about <laughs> 1930. And the last time they played, as you see, 1981, Bob Huco and Wayne Peace led that victory for the Florida Gators over, even then, a very fine Furman football team. Scott Peacock will kick it off for the Furman Paladins, the senior out of Nashua, New Hampshire. Monty Duncan at the bottom of your screen, and Kurt Young at the top, staying deep to return. And it is Kurt Young from about the 10-yard line and down he goes 
at the 19. The tackle made by Bill Ballard, a reserve linebacker for the Furman Paladins. Florida's offensive unit. Quarterback Shane Matthews off to a tremendous start. Eric Rett inserted at the tailback spot to start this afternoon's game. A veteran offensive line for the Florida Gators, which is anchored by junior center Cal Dixon, a sophomore first-team All-America just a year ago. Dexter McNabb could not hold on to the football at the 24-yard line. It will be second down and 10. Furman drops back in a three-deep zone as we take a look at their uh, defense. One of the top defenses uh, historically in the Southern Conference. Uh, they were hit rather hard by graduation. Now the Gators are back at the line of scrimmage for their second play of this series. Matthew straight back to throw again. There is a penalty flag down. The ball is caught by tight end Kirk Kirkpatrick at the 27-yard line. Well, let's see what the penalty flag is all about. This will be about a yard shy of a first down. It looks like it might go against the home team. Taylor Quarles made the play defensively for the Paladins, but it might be that we had a holding in the Florida backfield as Shane Matthews was chased out of the pocket. Clint Crocker, David, number 71, had excellent pressure right there. Got on the corner of the offensive guard and that might have been where the holding was called, but uh, excellent pressure by Crocker. As I was mentioning, these uh, kids were hurt uh, by graduation. Uh, lost about five starters off that defense, but... Uh, by their defensive ends, Kelly Fletcher and Chris Roper were both all Southern Conference performers and both moved on, both academic All-Americans as well, as I understand. Tough to replace kids like that. Matthews from his end zone. Throwing for Kirkpatrick, but really just got rid of the football. Furman had good coverage. Jason, Jason Grant, Grant was there. That play was designed as a rollout to get the quarterback a little bit more time to look downfield. Matthews drops back initially, then rolls out to the right. The fullback, McNabb, double teamed on the defensive end with the offensive tackle, and Matthews was outside easily there, but Kirkpatrick, his primary receiver, was well covered by Jason Grant. The Gators find themselves in a third down and 20. We are early in the first period from Florida Field in Gainesville. It looks like another sellout crowd. There were just a few tickets left before the start of this afternoon's game. An official timeout for some discussion. Now we're set to resume play. needs to convert here otherwise they turn the ball over to Furman giving Furman good field position early in the first period Matthews is going to be knocked down Flint Crocker the big defensive lineman made the stop number 71 who put the pressure on earlier and forced the holding call against the Florida offensive line, a big sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, makes the stop. The second big play of the series. He had put pressure on Matthews earlier. Working on Bromley there, number 52. Chris Bromley looks like he's got his hands full. Herman is a lot smaller than Florida, as you would expect, but a very quick and athletic team. Jason Haley kicks it out of the end zone, and the fair catch is called for and made by Don Clardy. We'll take a commercial break and be right back from Florida Field. No score with the Paladins just taking possession of the football. With the football for the first time this afternoon at the 49-yard line of the Florida Gators. And the quarterback, Frankie DeBus, looked like had a mix-up with the fullback, Billy Stockdale, and Michael Brandon was there to knock down the quarterback in the backfield, a loss of about three. Jason Haley got off a pretty nice 40-yard punt out of the end zone with no return. That was an excellent job. The Purple Paladins, uh, known for their running game, run the option. 
Bit of confusion on the first play, however. This quarterback, Frankie DeBus, a fine talent. That's the tailback, Carl Tremble, getting good yardage on second down to the Florida 44-yard line. Linebacker Ephesians Bartley made the stop. That Paladin offensive front, an outstanding group. They lost only one starter from last year. The center, Steve Duggan, a three-time All-Southern Conference performer. Brad Culpepper and Michael Brandon working against a tough guy there right up the middle. Damon Bradley in a quarterback. And did not get the first down. The Bartley made the tackle. That was unusual to see a substitution at quarterback. I didn't see that. Uh, yeah, freshman out of uh, North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Bradley checked in, but there's a penalty against the Gators. I don't believe DeBusk was hurt. We take a look at the replay, which Furman did not get the first down on. DeBusk is back on the field now. Perhaps Bradley uh, a better runner, and they wanted to get him outside. Well, that's hard. On the option. Hard to imagine as well as DeBusk runs that option. Uh, he's their third leading ground gainer, the quarterback is, for the Purple Paladins. Tailback, fullback, quarterback. That's how they run the ball. That's a first down for Furman. The Gators have not been a heavily penalized team this year, but have picked up two quick ones here in the first period. Gators defensive front four, anchored by All-American Huey Richardson. Solid group of linebackers. And the defensive backfield. Will White picked off three Alabama passes last week. A Furman first down. Fullback Billy Stockdale is wrapped up after very little yardage. Mark Murray made the tackle, number 54, and that Gator defensive front. Mark Murray from Apopka, Florida. Getting penetration. Clogging things up. Uh, had no chance right there on the option. Frankie DeVusk, the senior out of Greenville, Tennessee. Did not have one of his better weeks last week in a victory over UT Chattanooga. Jerry Odom, the linebacker, comes slashing through to stop the quarterback on the option play. They lost a couple back to about the 41. Boy, your linebacker, your inside linebackers have got to be on their toes working against the option offense. And Odom was right there for that play. Yeah, if they take the bait on an inside run and the quarterback can get outside, uh, very difficult to stop. A lot of pressure on that inside linebacker. Furman with terrific field position here on their first offensive effort of the afternoon. Penalty flags again, stopping play. As the bus goes down. Looks like we're going to have another penalty against the Florida Gators. And timeout has been called. We'll straighten it out for you when we come back to Florida Field. No score in the first period. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of Florida solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. There was no penalty on the last play. Florida was simply confused about its defensive coverage and called timeout. Big third down. The tailback, Carl Trimble. Gets a couple of yards to about the 38-yard line of the Florida Gators. Huey Richardson wrapped him up. And that will bring up fourth down for Furman. On third and long, trying to cross that Gator defense up by running the draw. You'll see Huey Richardson come in from the top right on your screen. There comes Huey. Excuse me, on the draw. Furman's Chris Wade back to punt from near midfield. The rush is on, but Wade gets it off. Ronnie Duncan signaled the fair catch, let the ball hit, and again, Florida is in miserable field position. 
after a 34-yard kick by freshman Chris Wade. The Gators will have the ball at their five-yard line. There's no score with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Boy, this is a dramatic drop-off, isn't it, from the intensity of the first ball game and then the Alabama ball game. This, this thing is boring so far. we got to get something cranked up out there. Sophomore quarterback Shane Matthews with McNabb and Rhett behind him. This is Eric Rhett. Out across the five to about the seven or eight-yard line. The nose guard, Alan Edwards, and the tackle, Jeff Sanders, combined on the stop. Jimmy Satterfield, the head coach for the Furman Paladins, replaced Dick Sheridan. He did such a tremendous job in the late 70s and early 80s in getting the Furman football program on the map. Coach Satterfield has just kept the tradition rolling right along. Satterfield was an assistant under Dick Sheridan. Oh, and it's picked off. Jason Grant tackled from behind at the four-yard line of Florida. Oh, that was a world-class hit right there. Trey Everett coming across the middle. Let's see who he gets a piece of it. Oh, we don't see that. Big turnover after the gigantic hit. Kirkpatrick saves a touchdown. Furman's got the ball at the Florida four-yard line and a small gathering of Paladin fans from the upstate of South Carolina are on their feet. The pitch to the tailback, Tremble, and he is denied the end zone by linebacker Ed Robinson at about the two-yard line. Dell Spear, number four for the Gators, was late getting into the ball game and was offside. He's out of the picture right here, but Gators are flagged for offsides, so the Paladins are going to save a down, be first down again. That's the third penalty assessed against the Gators here in the first quarter, and I know all the talk about the team not being flat, really being ready to play this afternoon. And Despite the NCAA decision on Thursday, we heard all of the talk, but so far here this afternoon, the Florida Gators have not come out with fire in their eyes against Furman. The Paladins threaten to score. They've got first and goal now at the two-yard line. Stockdale and Trumbull in the backfield behind the bus. Gators are in a eight-man front. Tremble hit behind the line. And the tackle made by William Gaines at about the three-yard line. Gaines seen a lot of action this ball game. Uh, Michael Brandon had been starting a defensive tackle. He's in there as well in this short yardage situation. Gaines does an excellent job making the hit in the backfield. Brandon and William Games in the ball game at the same time. They play the same position for the Gators. The bus. Over through his tight end, Tate Waters, who was open in the end zone. Hawk had coverage on him, but had the ball been thrown a little bit more toward the receiver, it would have been a touchdown for right. Berman. Sprints out to his left, and the tight end did sneak out. Tim Palk in pursuit, but Tate was wide open. And it's third and goal. The bus on the option. We'll get nowhere. Defense standing tall in the shadow of the north end zone. Dewey Richardson made the tackle. It'll be fourth down, and here comes Furman's field goal team. And I think you'll see Tim Palk in on the action again. There's Huey Richardson, and there's Gerald Odom, and finally Tim Palk, the two inside linebackers, as you see big Huey right there. Just the Gators winning the battle at the line of scrimmage on that series. Gators with their back to the wall. Here comes Furman looking for three points. 
Glenn Connolly to try and put the Paladins on top. He's two out of two this season. Barefooted Connolly kicks it through, and Furman is on top three to nothing. Thanks to the pass interception, which gave the Paladins the football at the Florida five-yard line. 8.42 left in the period. Furman three, Florida nothing. We'll be right back. We're looking for Gator programming. Sports Channel's got it. On Thursdays, the hotline with Coach Steve Spurrier. Football replays on Saturday night. Next week, Mississippi State against the Gators. And Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier. And, of course, as always, check your local listings for availability in your area. Berman kicking it off. As Scott Peacock sends it deep. And Monty Duncan can only manage about the 22 or 23 yard line. The Furman now has intercepted 10 passes and this is the fourth game of the season. Well, they've had great field position this afternoon. The Gators on their first series got nowhere and punted out of their end zone and Furman started on at about the 50 yard line. Then that interception was what down to the eight yard line. That was an eight yard uh, drive for the three points. Gators enjoy their best field position of the game thus far. Eric Rett, no room on the corner. Rett manages a yard to the 25. Somebody's helmet comes flying out of the pack. Jeff Sanders made the tackle for Furman. Paladins managed the Glenn Connolly field goal. They were denied the six points on the Florida Gator goal line stand. But Furman leads 3-0 with 8.07 left in the first quarter. Ernie Mills and Trey Everett are the wide receivers on second down and eight. Everett, nowhere to go. Try to get the ball to Trey Everett on the short side of the field with a quick screen. Gators line up on the hash mark nearest to this sideline then throw the quick screen to the short side of the field trying to get some room for Trey Everett right there but just great reaction by that firm and defense he had very little room to maneuver never tackled by all Southern Conference linebacker Kevin Kendrick now it's third and seven Dexter McNabb the fullback wide open has the first down the Gators first of the afternoon out to about the 32-yard line. Again, Kendrick and the fellow linebacker, Coda Suttle, in on the stop for the Paladins. There, basically, the Paladins had eight men in coverage, only rushed three, and those eight guys dropped back rather dramatically. Matthews was able to dump the ball off to his fullback. The fullback has not been uh, a primary or key receiver for the Gators uh, this year. They like to go primarily to the outside receivers, but right there picked up the first hit. Tailback Willie McClendon picks up four yards on first down. Coda Suttle, the linebacker, made the tackle. No huddle. Willie McClendon again on the replay. Eric Retz started this afternoon. Coach Spurrier very impressed with Eric Retz's progress. Willie McClendon comes in now seeing duty as well, but the Gators in no huddle. McClendon, short side of the field. Nice cut back to the inside. Ivan Johnson, Johnson took him out of bounds. David, what was impressive there, and I think something Willie McClendon has to learn, is take your time. Don't run up the back of your fullback. Look, right here, he just hesitates for a second, lets his blockers do their job. Then there's a gaping hole. Sometimes these uh, young running backs get too anxious, run right up the back of their, their blocking back or their lineman and get nowhere right there. He just hesitated for a second and things opened up. That's what he has to learn to do. He's got all the natural ability in the world, just has to learn how to use it. Kelvin Randolph is the fullback. McClendon in the wide open spaces to the 20 yard line. What a block thrown at the Line of scrimmage by number 77, Hisham Ishmael. See if we can pick it up on the replay. Big number 77 right there on the draw. Again, running intelligently. 
McClendon runs around the block of Hisam Ishmael. A significant gain, probably his big, biggest gainer of the year. Three attempts, 43 yards this afternoon. That's a pretty healthy average there, isn't it? McClendon did not start, but has come on in this second offensive series to carry the football all the way to the 20-yard line of Furman. Now Matthews will try to throw it for the end zone. Touchdown, Kirk Kirkpatrick. The first career touchdown of that senior's career. Kirkpatrick gets in the zone right behind Jason Grant, number 38, and Vinton Bell, number 44. Wide open in the seam. Kirk Kirkpatrick, uh, very prominent in the Gators offense this year. That young man's going to catch 50 or 60 passes this season. Arden Krzyzewski's extra point makes it a 7-3. Florida lead with 5.51. Left to play in the first quarter. Let's go down on the sideline to Steve Babbick. You know, David and Jim, the success of the no huddle offense is the home crowd. Somebody asked Steve Spurrier, why didn't you run the no huddle offense in Alabama? And coach said simply, hey, when you're on the road, you can't run that kind of offense because of the noise level. Here at home, obviously, you're going to have more success with the no huddle offense, and you saw a good sign of it right there. Let's go back upstairs. An impressive Florida Gator drive, which started back at about the 24-yard line. 76 yards, seven plays. Kirk Kirkpatrick's 35th career reception as a Florida Gator, his very first touchdown, Jim. Was that his first touchdown? <laughs> well, it won't be his last, will it? He's uh, Coach Spurrier, when he saw Kirkpatrick in spring practice, said, hey, this is the finest tight end as I've ever coached, and he's going to be a big part of our offense, and we're going to get the ball to this young man. And what that does to David is opens up uh, territory for Ernie Mills, Trey Everett, Barber, all the wide receivers when you have a, an effective tight end like Kirk Kirkpatrick. And uh, hard to believe that's his first touchdown pass. Ryan Ruland, a freshman out of Altamont Springs, Lake Brantley High School, kicks it away. And out to about the 23-yard line comes Darrell Rogers. Tackle made by Myrick Anderson on the special team. 76-yard drive, seven plays. The running of Willie McClendon. The passing of Matthews and Kirkpatrick put the Gators on top, 7-3. to three. First time Furman started in their own territory in this ballgame. Tight end, Paul Sifri makes the catch. Sifri was not expected to play a lot, if at all, this afternoon. He was injured in last week's game against UT Chattanooga, but there he was catching a big pass. And the Paladins have the ball as far as 38-yard line. The bus is going to catch Sifri as tight end on the dead run. The big guy strips a couple of tacklers away and moves down inside the Gators 40 yard line. Well, Trimble hit by Brad Culpepper at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Brad Culpepper, the senior out of Tallahassee, making his 15th start. Coach Jimmy Satterfield, the head coach of the Furman Purple Paladins, was their offensive coordinator before he became the head coach. He's primarily emphasizes the run, but he's, it's a very productive offense, as we've seen to bust ability to throw the ball as well. Versatile offense, no question. Huey Richardson trips up the running back at about the 35-yard line. I think I said Culpepper was a senior. Let's not take a year of eligibility away from the young man. He's only a junior. Bring up third down. And about seven. There's the head coach of the Furman Paladins. And with the headset on, in control of that Furman sideline. Although they are about to run out of time to get this playoff. 
but they get the snap away. Maybe they've been better off with a five-yard penalty. V. Bartley and Huey Richardson caved in on the bus and dropped the quarterback for a loss of four. Yeah. yeah, first of all, they were late getting the right personnel in the game. Then they were confused on what they were doing, and then the Gators were coming with a blitz. So that play had no chance. Gator defense rises to the occasion, and the Paladins will punt the ball away. Earlier in the game, Chris Wade put one inside the 10-yard line in this type of situation. And once again, he's going to back the Gators up as the ball rolls out of bounds at Florida's 8-yard line. Nice job of punting again by Chris Wade, a 31-yard kick. Again with no return. Well, in terms of field position, the Gators have had terrible field position throughout the first quarter, starting inside their 20 on every occasion, this time starting inside their 10. Shane Matthews started cranking it up on that last Florida possession. Back to the freshman tailback, Eric Rett. Ivan Johnson makes the tackle. This is a trap play with a lead block by your fullback. And we see young Eric Rett, who has the ability to drag tacklers with him as well. Four-yard average this afternoon. Almost the big play to Ernie Mills. Almost an instant replay of last week's 70-yard pass out of the end zone. Which that's right. connected. That's, that's very true, David, because Jason Grant is all by himself. He gets no help inside. Shane Matthews sees he has Ernie Mills all alone, but Jason Grant is able to break on the ball and just deflect it before it gets to Ernie. Just got his hand on an excellent play by the quarterback who was out there all by himself. are going to have the first down and lots more Rep to the 33 yard line Jeff Coleman the strong safety made the tackle for Furman Rhett does a nice job of bouncing outside off the block of the tight end gets a little help downfield from Terrence Barber who's in front of the defensive back Those wide receivers, uh, very important to the running game, as well as important to the passing game. First down. Rhett cannot get away from all Southern Conference linebacker Kevin Kendrick. Third year starter for the Purple Paladins, Kendrick. Dexter McNabb did a nice job here picking up a blitz right there at the top of your screen, giving Shane Matthews a bit of extra time to find Rhett. Excellent job by the fullback, McNabb, protecting his quarterback. Second and short. Again going deep this time for Everett, but overthrows him at the 20-yard line of Furman. Jason Grant's going to need some oxygen when he gets back after this series. Again, all by himself, this time on Trey Everett. But, yeah, he's taking himself out of the game. He's not going to wait till the series is over. There we see Trey Everett. But Jason Grant, number 38 for the Purple Paladins, is taking himself out of the ball game. He's been picked on enough in this series. Shane Matthews trying to sneak for the first down. Needed a full yard, and it looks like from where we sit, he got it. Signaled first and ten. Linebacker Robert Beavers hit him head on in the gap. The sophomore quarterback got the necessary yardage. Head coach Steve Spurrier trying to pick up his third victory with the Florida Gators.
Brandon really running hard and strong in this game here in the first quarter. Well, he's running hard and strong through gaping holes, too, David. Uh, Chris Bromley pulls the right guard right there and really can't find anybody to hit. Watch Bromley, number 52. He's looking for somebody. Then McClendon cuts back. Again, running wisely, McClendon using his mental abilities as well as his physical abilities this afternoon. Pass complete to the tight end. And Greg Keller has his second reception of the season. The sophomore out of New Orleans. Uh, a great pass protection once again. Rich McGeorge, who was a tight end with the Green Bay Packers, as we look at the Gators tight end, Greg Keller. Rich McGeorge doing a great job coaching this offensive line. He's been with Steve Spurrier at Duke University, and he's doing a tremendous job here this afternoon and this season coaching that offensive line. That's the end of the first period from Florida Field. The Gators driving with the football and leading 7-3 to three against Furman. <laughs> Willie McClendon has already rushed for 58 yards, and fellow tailback Eric Rett, 30 yards rushing. There you see the rushing yardage. This is a Gator team that in the first two games of the season has gotten most of its offensive production. In fact, 73% of it from the pass. Matthews going for tight end Kirk Kirkpatrick and six points, but overthrew him at the 10-yard line. Kirkpatrick was there, and Matthews needed to zip the ball in there to him if that was going to be completed, but he floated it a bit, and Kirkpatrick wasn't able to get to it. You know, talking about the running game, I think this is probably the first time this year uh, at any time during a ball game that the running stats have been greater than the passing stats for the Gators. And we thought that they might try and emphasize the running game this afternoon. And yet the touchdown came on a pass to the tight end. Eric Rett, high steps across the 30. The linebacker Robert Beavers with the tackle. Well, initially there's a big pile at the line of scrimmage. Then watch Bromley. Watch number 52. He's going to move that pile over a foot. And Eric Rett has some daylight. Initially, nothing there. Then Bromley comes over and does his job. Gives Rhett an opening. Gators have made it tough on Furman defensively by getting so many yards on first down on this series. They've had a lot of third and one, third and second and one, second and two, third and one, enabling them to gamble a little bit. Again, throwing deep. Almost a great catch by Eric Rhett at the goal line, but... Pretty good coverage by Taylor Quarles. Would have been a sensational catch by number 33 had he pulled that in. I thought he was going to make it. He saw the ball. Quarles didn't. Quarles is in excellent position but doesn't see the ball. Rhett did. Almost comes up with a one-handed grab. An excellent effort nonetheless. But look at this. Almost gets it. He's got one hand on it. Quarles is there but never saw the football. you got to find that football as a defensive back. That pass almost intercepted by Benton Bell, the defensive end. Matthews' receiver had fallen down. There's Bell, the junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Bell drops over to help out on the underneath coverage. Jerry Booker was the quarterback who was behind the Gator wide receiver, but Matthews was a little short on that one. Well, that one could have been a big, big play, and Bell Caught the football. He had nothing but green turf in front of him. Now it's third and ten. McClendon draws a crowd quickly and is close to another Florida first down. He was trying to get the 18. The spot is going to be closer to the 19-yard line, so they're a good yard shy. And let's see what Steve Spurrier decides here early in the second period. His team leading seven to three. Needing a good yard and a half, actually, for a first down. Coach Spurrier very disappointed with the two fourth down attempts at Alabama last week. Gators coming up short on both occasions. Right here, he's looking for, su for success on a fourth down and short. See if they can get it. Tailback, fumble. That will not do it. Furman has the football at the 23-yard line. 
They were going to try and power it in there, but I don't think he ever got the handoff. No, I think he laid it on his hip. No, and I don't think he would have had the first down had he held on to the football. Furman really closed it up. The ball recovered by Venton Bell. The defensive end pounced on the football, and Furman takes it over, trailing only 7-3 to three with 13.35 to play in the second quarter. Well, 0 for 3 on fourth and short. 0 for 2 last week, 0 for 1 this afternoon. I know that's going to upset Coach Spurrier, but I don't think the handoff was ever made on that exchange. The Busk looks for the tight end. Sifri makes the catch. And he is knocked down at the 29 or 30-yard line, about a 6 or 7-yard gain. Sifri was extremely doubtful for this afternoon's game. Hurt last week against UT Chattanooga. He's a quality player. This is called a tight end wait. Safri just hesitates at the line of scrimmage, waits for the linebackers to take their drop, then cuts across the middle to look for an opening and picked up a healthy six or seven yards. Tremble. First down to the 38 and a half. Darren Mickle made the tackle. Tremble out of Jacksonville. Played high school ball at Bishop Kenny. Did not start last year until the seventh game of the season wound up with almost a thousand yard rushing. Yeah, they think he might be one of their best uh, recruits ever in terms of ability to run the football. Just a great freshman year, true freshman, as you mentioned last year, and uh, they're real excited about the potential that young man has. The Musk was under pressure and overthrew Stockdale, the fullback. James James Spear, David, who's placed the Gator back position, I think had coverage right there, and he was very fortunate that that was incomplete because he knew he'd be answering to Coach Jim Bates on that one. He just got hung up at the line of scrimmage, and DeBusk did a nice job of finding the opening man, open man, but just overthrew the ball. trying to hit wide receiver John Whitmire and threw it out beyond his reach. He got a glimpse of what Frankie DeBusk has accomplished at Furman. They've had some fine individual players quarterback in other positions. Remember David Whitehurst was a quarterback at Furman in the mid-70s. Had a professional career with the Green Bay Packers. Stanford Jennings was a running back extraordinaire in the early 80s. Sam White, who uh, coaches the Cincinnati Bengals, was a teammate of mine in Detroit for a while. He he played at Furman. Oh! Flags are down. The pass is incomplete, intended for Brad Stevens. There are flags in the backfield. And for Stevens, incomplete. Flag and play. Brad Culpepper hit the quarterback, and the tight end, Sifri, is down on the field as well. Illegal motion is the call against Furman. But the Paladin tight end who was injured last week against the University of Tennessee Chattanooga is down on the field. Let's take a timeout. We'll be right back to Florida Field early in the second period. The Gators 7, the Paladins 3. We'll be right back. Florida leads Furman. But only by the score of 7-3 to three early in the second period. Let's go down on the field quickly to Steve Babbitt. Thanks, David. Take a look at the temperature right now down on the field. It's about the 110-degree mark. And right now the sun obviously shining on the Furman sideline. The uh, heat down here pretty hot. It affected Eric Red, who has asthma. Had a slight asthma attack, but Eric's okay. Let's at, go back upstairs. At Babbitt, he wants uh, Willard Scott's job, I think. That's he? right. <laughs> He's looking good down there in the heat. Well, those are weather reports, sir. We're getting those... Right from the, the site of the battle. Florida will have the ball at its own 26-yard line after the Furman punt by Chris Wade. Gators lead 7-3 with 12-10 left in the period. Has not been an exceptional performance thus far for the Florida football team. They have put 147 yards on the board, but only seven points, and have turned the ball over twice. Play action.
action. Matthews double pump. Wet hit from behind by Daryl Rogers, the quarterback, to save what could have been a much bigger play for the Florida Gators. Kevin Kendrick, the all Southern Conference inside linebacker, thinks he has Rhett wrapped up. Rhett hooks right in front of him, but he just sprints away from Kendrick and picks up the first down. A lot of poise there by Shane Matthews. Great protection, had time to look around, dumps the ball off to one of his secondary receivers. Rhett to about the 40-yard line. By the way, the Furman tight end, Paul Sifri, walked off under his own power. His injury last week against Chattanooga was a shoulder injury. And it could be that he got popped in that spot again. The bruised shoulder last week was expected to keep him out today. No huddle. I believe he's calling the play at the line of scrimmage. The last time the Gators went no huddle in this game, they drove for a touchdown. Kirkpatrick has the first down to the 48-yard line. Kendrick again in on the stop. Corey Holden, number 47, has the first shot at Kirkpatrick. Once again, the senior tight end catches everything he touches. Matthews does a nice job of drilling in between those two eights on his jersey. Once again, the Gators line up without the huddle. Nice cut back into the inside. And Eric Rett has about five more. Jeff Sanders, the junior tackle out of Atlanta, makes the stop for Furman. Steve Norris, uh, inside linebacker, number 42, had the first shot. But again, Rett's not letting that first guy hit him. He's, he's avoiding those tacklers. And your backs who come up with a big yardage production every week, uh, they know how to get by that, that first guy and sometimes that second guy as well. And Furman is going to use a timeout with 10.09 left in the first half. The score, the Gators 7, the Paladins 3, and we'll be right back on Sports Channel. All right, here we go, here we go. Whoa! Fluids. Game. Nothing puts it back like Gatorade. Channel's next Gator football game will be Saturday, September 29th, 11.30 p.m. You'll see the Mississippi State Bulldogs take the field against the Gators at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville. Check your local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage of this game in your area. Another Southeastern Conference battle. Gators dominating in terms of yardage, but lead only 7-3 on the scoreboard. A pass interception which led to Furman's field goal and a fumble on fourth and one deep in Furman territory have helped keep this game close thus far. Gators are second and five. Looks like a Chinese fire drill with bodies moving every direction and flags all over the place. I think Cal Dixon, the center, might have been the one that forgot the snap count there. It looked like Two guys moved on the right side. Looked like the guys on the left wanted to move, but uh, Dixon was holding the football. Well, penalized five yards for Caesar. Gators penalized again. That's the fourth time the Gators have been flagged in this game. Furman has yet to draw a penalty. 
You know, David, there's unwritten rule with offensive linemen. It's okay to look at the guy that's the culprit, but you can't point at him. You know, sometimes you want to point at him, say, it wasn't me, it was him. It's okay to look at him, give him that evil eye. And about three guys were looking at Dixon on that play. Matthews has Mills. And Mills has a first down of the Furman 40. Kevin Kendrick, uh, the linebacker, couldn't get over there inside or underneath Ernie Mills in time right there, and Matthews was able to get the football to him, and Ernie does a nice job getting down the uh, sideline for the first down. There's the first guy. He's just going to get out and sit in that dead zone right there. He's just going to sit. Kendrick finally gets out there, but he's a little too late, and Ernie picks up the first down. Gators are back at the line of scrimmage already. Mills' seventh reception of the season. Matthews again throwing to the tailback coming out of the backfield. This time Willie McClendon for a gain of five. Matthews has shown an ability through the first two and a half games now in the season to find a wide variety of pass receivers. It's all part of the Steve Spurrier offense. Young Kelvin Randolph now David in at fullback did a nice job picking up the blitz. He gets a chance to carry the football, but not much of a chance thanks to Jeff Sanders, number 75, who stuffed the play behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Randolph, Kelvin Randolph, excuse me, freshman running back. No huddle. Third down and seven. Randolph is the only running back. Matthews has two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarles intercepts the football. The second interception thrown today by St. Matthews. Quarles, third interception of the season. And another Florida Gator rally has been stopped. Two turnovers. He just doesn't get enough on this when Andy also was zeroed in on Trey Everett. Everett but took his eyes off the intended receiver. Much like Hollingsworth uh, last week, uh, Will White said Gary Hollingsworth was telegraphing his passes and maybe Shane Matthews picked up the same bad habit. At least he showed it on that one occasion. The bus works the option to Trumbull. Trumbull slides to the 40, a gain of five on first down. Ed Robinson, Richard Fain, James Spear were all there. Robinson, good look at the linebacker out of the Funiac Springs as you look at Trimble there. The sophomore running back out of Jacksonville. Been impressed with the play of Ed Robinson. Fullback Stockdale hit by Odom and Bartley and Robinson again, number 41. And Culpepper down at the bottom of the stack as well. Seven fifty-four left in the first half as we take another look. Fred Culpepper, the nose guard, fights off the block, then reacts back to make the hit at the line of scrimmage. He's been giving his body up. Every Saturday afternoon, very difficult job to play inside. Looking for the first down, but instead, he finds the turf. Jerry Odom was there first for the Gators attacking defense. That'll bring up fourth down. Inside linebacker, no one's there to pick him up. Generally, that's a back's responsibility, but on that occasion, Odom was untouched. Furman not having a lot of success punting the ball this afternoon, David. I think a little short of 35 yards on the, on the average. Well, Wade killed two, though, inside the 10 on pooch kick, so that's a little bit misleading. Gators put a strong rush on. This is not a good kick, end over end, but it does get a Furman bounce. Falls down at the 23-yard line. Chris Wade with the punt. The Gators with the football, leading 
with 6.44 left in the first half of the game. Florida's offense back on the field after turning it over. Holding Furman to three plays and a punt. Drive starting at the 23-yard line. Matthews will keep and step out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Don't forget that you can stay up to date on all the latest sports news by listening to the Sports Channel Florida Sports Report daily with yours truly on the radio dial throughout Florida. Check local listings for times in your area. 6.37 left to play in the first half. Florida leads on the scoreboard only 7-3. They've dominated the game statistically. Shane Matthews has already thrown 19 times, but those two interceptions have really hurt. The reverse is set up, but Terrence Barber almost got hit about 10 yards behind the line. He winds up going down at the 16. Almost a terrific play by Mike Bobrovsky. But still, his teammates kept Barber from gaining anything. There's almost the terrific play there. Might have been Mike Zimmerman. I, I think we it couldn't was. pick up the number, number 64. It was a defensive tackle. He didn't go for the bait. They let him in a little too soon. He got the penetration, saw the reverse coming, and just messed that play up completely. It was Zimmerman, 64, that almost got Barber back at about the 10. Nice catch by the tight end, Kirkpatrick. First down, Florida. What Kirk Kirkpatrick does here is evade inside linebacker Kevin Kendrick, and before the safeties can react, Matthews delivers the ball. You see Kendrick fall down right there. Kirkpatrick on the right of your screen is now going to go on the post route. He's just evaded the inside linebacker Kendrick before the safeties can get there. Matthews delivered the ball for the first down. The time winding down in the first half, 5.20 left. Penalty flags. I think it'll be against the Gators again for the illegal motion. Mark White, the right tackle, moved before the snap. Five yards to Cooper. Big offensive tackle all by himself. That's what you call being on a different wavelength, I think. White's done a nice job, though. He's been outstanding the first couple of weeks, moved from the guard position last season to tackle this year. Matthews will have to step out of bounds again. Again, unable to find an open receiver. Well, you have to give Furman a good deal of credit here in the first half. They only have three first downs in the game. Offensively, they've not done much, but they've made some big plays defensively and have kept it close. They've used a lot of players, too, in this late afternoon heat. I think realistically, coming into this ballgame, they were probably a four-touchdown underdog. Clemson beats them 30 to zip last year. The blitz is on. Matthews throwing for Barber. Out of bounds he goes at the 19-yard line. Daryl Rogers, number 21, hanging on for dear life, and Barber almost runs away from him. Terrence Barber, the young man who came up with a big touchdown catch at Alabama last week, all by himself. Rodgers has no help inside, and Barber almost breaks the tackle for a touchdown. Terrence Barber from Auburndale, Florida, all by himself, reaches down around his knees to pick that one off. Furman had a strong safety blitz on that play. Barber was covered man-to-man. -man. This is Eric Rett to the nine-yard line and close to a Florida first down. 
He saw Ishmael, the other guard. We've been talking about Chris Bromley and his trapping capabilities this afternoon. That time Ishmael opens up a gaping hole. Eric Retz really putting up some impressive numbers here in the first half. Again, statistically, the Gators dominating in terms of total offense, but as you mentioned, David, those turnovers really hurt the Gators, and the lead is only 7-3 with about four minutes left in this first half. You're going to measure for the first down. He's very near it. You know, this Florida offensive line averages 6'4", 281. Furman's defensive front line averages 6'3", 232, so that's almost a 50-pound difference yeah, that's between the two lines, and that could... Uh, ultimately be the determining factor in this one as the day wears on and so does the Furman defense. And generally across the board when you're talking Division 1 AA and sure. Division 1A that's pretty much the difference across the board and the Southern Conference and the Southeastern Conference the guys in the Southeastern Conference on the average are just generally bigger stronger and faster but the athletic talent is is there on Furman's side of the line of scrimmage as well. These kids are excellent players. They just right, don't match up physically. They're a little bit bigger. They'd be at South Carolina or Clemson or Georgia, Florida, a program like that. We're really talking size that separates Not a ability. player at yeah. Furman uh, as opposed to one at Florida. Not ability, as you pointed out. Matthews, as the team did not get a first down, Brings them up to the line. There's the first down, and Rhett goes down at about the seven-yard line. Tackled by Ivan Johnson. He's all by himself there, too. There was a, another tremendous hole. Gators trying to power that football down the field. There's the trap. Here comes Esam. Eric Rhett just trips a little bit right there. Again, a bit of inexperience with the young backs. They get a little antsy. Rhett ran into a brick wall at the seven. Coda Suttle, the linebacker. Closed quickly on the freshman running back. It will be second down and goal. Boy, what's amazing me is Coach Spurrier is so quick signaling these plays in before the pileup is even over. He's already signaled in the play that he wants. They are going back to the huddle. It's not a no-huddle offense, but he's getting his plays in in a hurry. He knows what he wants to do. Line receivers flanked out to the left. Going for the end zone, Trey Everett. number 21 just can't get there in time Trey Everett dragging across on the deep route there a number of crisscrossing routes on that play and Everett's wide open Krzyzewski's extra point makes it a 14 to 3 lead with 238 to play in the second quarter and let's take another look at Shane Matthews' second touchdown pass of the day. Fakes a draw. He sees Everett all by himself, as we see. Ivan Johnson also trailing Everett right there. Neither one of them could catch up with the sprinting wide receiver. Inter head coach Steve Spurrier. Yeah, says, thank goodness for that one. Let's get some more points, guys. Now you know why it didn't take him any time at all to get that play in. He knew all along it was going to be a winner. You know, we talked about Galen Hall chewing his fingernails. Well, Steve Spurrier really works on his visor. You have to watch him out there. The intensity which, with which he beats that visor on his head is something. He'll rip it off about 50 times during the ball game, I've noticed. And at least he's got fingernails. How many do you, do you suppose he goes through? I don't know. In the they, course they, of the season. They take a beat, but keep your eye on the workout he gives that visor during a ball game. There, he's going to work with it a little bit right there. Now he's he likes it right now, so he got a touchdown, so he's patting it and 
<laughs> stroking it, but when things go bad, that visor takes a beating. He said, that's it, boys. We got our 14 now. Let's get the defense to work. Let's get Jim Bates, the defensive coordinator. Let him look at that big sign. He just took. Did you see that one? Furman has been penalized on the kick for holding. So Ryan Ruland will kick off 10 yards upfield at the 45. And there is the deep man, Freddie Burns. Ruland kicks this one almost through the uprights. Furman will have the football at its 20-yard line with 2.38 left in the first half. And Florida's defense, which has surrendered only 53 total yards, comes back onto the field. The big play in that touchdown drive, the third down pass completed to Terrence Barber, which got the Gators out of their end of the field and into scoring position. In their first three ball games, uh, Furman averaged 373 yards in total offense. Right now they got 53 yards. And big defensive have, play by Mark Murray. They're going to have less than that with that tackle for a loss. A new quarterback, Damon Bradley, running the option. He must be an option specialist because they brought him in, remember, on their first series to run the option. What's so impressive about the Gator defenders is the speed. Here you see a talented, speedy quarterback, but watch Mark Murray's. Three steps and he's with him. Murray's 6'3", 243, a little bit larger than the Furman quarterback. He was recruited as a linebacker. Good look and play on a... One step drop. Del Spear makes the tackle on Brad Stevens. Not a bad way to attack this pursuing Florida defense. Hit him with quick short passes. Well, especially when you only have nine yards rushing at this point in the game, you got to turn to another alternative. That was a nice play. It is third and a healthy yard. And Furman has had such trouble running the football and they fumbled the snap. I think the bus got it back or did he? William Gaines comes out of there with the football. They've given it to the Gators. He was trying to check off. He had not completed giving the signals to his own team and I think the center heard a sound. No, it was just a bad exchange. There wasn't any miscommunication between the center and the quarterback. I thought perhaps the center heard a sound and snapped it prematurely, but that was just a poor exchange. 154 left of the second quarter, and the Gators have a chance to put more up on the board, leading 14 to 3 already. Matthews for Kirkpatrick just off of his fingertips. Matthews is now 13 for 23. 170 yards. Two touchdowns and two interceptions. One forty-nine left of the second quarter. Gators come with three wideouts. Two to the near side, one to the short side of the field. The pass is thrown to the fullback, Terrell Jackson. And Jackson to the 23-yard line of Furman. Terrell Jackson from Stewart, Florida, is all by himself here on the screen. But once he cuts to the inside, the pursuit catches him. Jackson, a transfer from the University of Miami. Yeah, he was there for one year, then then sat out a year here at the university, right? Last year. Mm -hmm. Now he's a sophomore. Comes out of, out of one of the premier high school programs in the state, Martin County High. Don't forget, exciting NHL action here on Sports Channel through the month of October. Keep an eye on the New York Islanders, real contenders in the Patrick division, and a game against Wayne Gretzky and the Los Angeles Kings. 
And on the 6th of October, the defending Patrick Division champions against Hartford, a revamped Minnesota North Stars ball club with Bobby Clark as the new GM, and the Buffalo Sabres taking on the Hartford Whalers, all coming up on Sports Channel. You know, a record was set in St. Petersburg the other night with an NHL exhibition. Uh, 25,000, the Suncoast. Biggest Dome. crowd ever. I think Florida's going to get a, an expansion team. They've got some stiff competition from cities like Milwaukee and Seattle. A couple of Canadian cities also going for NHL expansion. There's the domination of this Florida team so far, but leading by only 11 late in the second quarter. A rollout pass. Mills out of bounds at the 11. There's a penalty flag down in the backfield. Chris Bromley does his impression of a rodeo bulldogger in that play. Going to bring this one back. He got on top of Clint Crocker, number 71, and just refused to let go. <laughs> Usually you hold him for a little bit, you know. But Chris, that was beyond the call of duty right there. And the referee standing right back in the backfield watching the whole thing. He's given a blow-by-blow -blow description of that holding play. Unfortunately for the Gators also, the play was rolling out to the right side, and Crocker had no chance to catch up with Matthews. But it's now third down and 15. The ball is fumbled. The Gators have recovered it. And now they've ruled it an incomplete pass. Which, which might be a break for Florida. Allen Edwards shook up Shane Matthews and made the ball pop loose. Let's see if he was cocked and throwing or if it was a fumble. Allen Edwards has been a star for Furman. No, uh, he just jarred the ball loose. That's there. a fumble. That's a break for the Gators if they give that. Uh... Well, it might be the difference in attempting a long field goal, although it looks like, well, is the field goal team coming on or the punt team? They don't know. There's nobody out there. Timeout. Now they're going to have to use a timeout because I think there's some confusion as to what exactly the team is going after. 1-10 left in the second quarter. Ryan Ruland, it looks like, is going to be called upon to try a long field goal. Ruland's the kickoff man. Arden Krzyzewski tries the field goals from a shorter distance, but Ruland apparently is going to kick or try to kick one through from about 50, 51 yards. Second-year freshman out of Altamont Springs. Might be experiencing a few butterflies at this very moment. What did Southern Mississippi, when they beat Alabama, that was a 52-yarder, I believe, wasn't it? It's not unusual. 52, yeah. Not unusual to see kids in this day and age have the 50-yard range. It's the accuracy, obviously, that's critically important, too. But uh, these kids have the range. 50 yards is, is possible. Johnny Nichols is the holder. Ruland didn't get all of it. And now penalty flags are down, and uh, there's some pushing and shoving. Alan Edwards, number 73, who had gotten that sack, and Isham Ishmael speaking to each other in tongues. You wouldn't want to hear that conversation. But one of them was flagged for a penalty. Might not have been suitable for family viewing. It's a personal foul against... The Gators, a personal foul against the Paladins. Penalty's offset. And does Furman have the football? Or, yeah, I guess so. I thought you played it down over. Maybe a dead ball foul after the kick. It was. They were kind of carrying that play beyond uh, what it should have been. <laughs> Had a few personal things to say to each other. And a push or two. 106 left in the half. 
Trimble hit by Michael Brandon. The converted he tight end has made a very effective conversion, I might add, to the defensive line. He looks like he's going to be an outstanding player. A junior now out of Perry. Eight yards rushing, net yards rushing for Furman at this point. And this is a team that's very proud of their running game. Of course, they're in a different division. One double A, but look at DeBusk. He's minus 16 on his own efforts. The fullback Stockdale to the 36. Carlton Miles made the tackle, and that will probably be the final play of the half. The Gators, uh, while dominant in the statistical department, only up by 11 as the teams head for the locker room. Our halftime score, the Florida Gators, 14. The Furman Paladins, 3. We'll be back to Florida Field in just one moment. set for the third quarter to start at Florida Field with the Gators leading the Furman Paladins 14 to 3. Shadows begin to fall in the late afternoon. Mercifully. Mercifully is right. Better than 110 degrees on the field earlier this afternoon. Ryan Ruland ready to kick it off. Nothing. There are your deep men. Daryl Rogers to the near side. I think today's the first official first day of fall. That really feels, just feel that nip in the air, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Rogers downs the ball five yards deep. Not, not a whole lot of dramatic change of seasons in Florida, is there? Not yet. Frankie DeBusk, uh, not exactly a memorable first half for him statistically. In fact, he was running for his life for much of the first half in that offensive backfield. Third-year starter. What is his record, David? Like 22 and two coming into this year, so he's 25 starter, yeah. and two. 25 and two as the starting quarterback for the Paladins. But remember, this team hasn't lost a lot overall. The bus goes down again. Godfrey Miles was there first, number 98. Gets the glad hand from his teammates. We've not seen a lot of Godfrey this afternoon. He's at the gator back position, and defensive coordinator Jim Bates likes to play attacking, offensive, defensive football. And look at this. He sends the gator back, and there's the inside linebacker, Jerry Odom, to finish him off. There's Big Godfrey, one of the most talented physical players on this ball club. Gators have been pretty darn stingy in the second half. Have yet to give up a touchdown this season in the second half. The bus wants to throw it. He does, but it's incomplete up around the 30-yard line. Intended for John Whitmire, the junior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. The bus is shaken up and wants to come out. Look at his calf. Uh, his left calf, he might have pulled a muscle in there earlier in the ball game. Uh, looks like he's got an additional wrap on his knee, and he might be out of action this afternoon. He's disappointed. That would be a shame. Busk is on the sideline now, and Hugh Swilling, the redshirt freshman quarterback from Chatsworth, Georgia, has come on to play. This is the third quarterback that Furman has used. Now his first action of the afternoon right now. A couple of yards as Tremble carries the football out across the 10 to about the 11-yard line. Tim Pock and Jerry Odom, the inside linebackers, made the tackle. But it's fourth down and long for Furman. Florida's defense has been outstanding again this afternoon. Freshman Chris Wade back to punt five yards deep in his end zone. Monty Duncan is deep to receive. Haters coming hard but can't get to this one. Wade, not a very long kick, is fair caught by Duncan at the 37. One of the things that pressure uh, rush does on the punter if it doesn't get to the ball at least it 
maybe uh, perhaps bothers him enough that he'll come up with a short punt. And right there, he felt the pressure and did not get off the good punt. The Gators have terrific field position, much different than the early of the first quarter of this ball game when the Gators had terrible field position. That was a 27-yard kick. Eric Rett breaks two tackles, then is brought down by Jeff Sanders and Ivan Johnson, the free safety. Yeah, Jeff Sanders, big number 75, playing an excellent game up front for the Paladins. Rhett starting this afternoon, first time in his career, first career start, and he's doing an excellent job. He might get that 100-yard figure before this day's over. He and McClendon have both run well. To the 14 of Furman. Excellent balance right here. Watch him bounce off the attempted tackle. He's going to get outside, cuts back. Now watch that. Boom, right there. They didn't wrap him up, and he simply bounces on down the field for another six yards. Ivan Johnson on the hit. 12 yards, seven, or excuse me, 12 attempts, 78 yards. Rett again gets the call to about the 10-yard line. Word from the field in the Florida locker room is that Steve Spurrier delivered a very stirring speech, especially to his offensive football team at halftime. Was not pleased at all with the way his offense performed in the first half. They have come out firing here early in the third period. Keeping on the ground with Rhett. Rhett has stood up at the six. Picking his way, though. He didn't force it. He waited to the last yeah, instant and then had a little bit of room. You know, Emmett Smith had so much talent, but Emmett Smith had the ability to pick holes where none existed. And right there, Rhett did a bit of that himself. Gators running with a two tight end offense. Power football on this drive. They need a long yard to get a first down. Rhett has that. Almost got six points. He stepped out of bounds inside the two near the one. Little toss pitch to the weak side. Try and pull the guard Isham Ismail. Isham Ismail out in front. There's the toss. Ernie Mills doing a nice job blocking downfield. 91 yards now for Eric Rett. And he's carried the ball every time on this drive. And he's leaning on those knees too, isn't he? He's looking for oxygen right now. Rett and McNabb. Fullback Dexter McNabb did not get in, but came very close. Inside the one, they'll spot it about a foot from the goal line. The first carry of the second half for the fullback. Quarterback reverses out on the quick handoff and not a whole lot of room there. And we got three tight ends in the ball game. Extra tight end comes in as a wing back. Rhett in motion. McNabb oh. fumbled a ball. And Furman thinks, says they've got it. And they do. Another Florida turnover. Second fumble of the day. The fourth turnover. And Furman dodges another bullet. The Paladins have it inside their own two. And the score remains the Gators 14. The Paladins. left in the fourth quarter. Matthews throws it to McClendon. 
McClendon has a first down to the 48 of Furman. Boy, he's a hard-running tailback, big and strong. Put up some unbelievable numbers in high school at University Christian in Jacksonville. It's a throwback screen, David, to the tailback, and Chris Bromley gets out there and throws a block. Mark White gets out there and throws a block, and Willie gets some running room, picking up first down inside Furman territory. McClendon again, cutting back across the green. Furman football inside there, too. Stockdale has stood up at the one. Linebacker Ed Robinson. Shot through the gap to make the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think that Gator defense is playing at a different emotional level than the Gator offense. The Gator offense a bit staggered by their inconsistency, but the Gator defense maybe can pick up their spirits by shutting down Furman deep in their own territory. Stockdale again, this time out to about the five. Jerry Odom on the tackle for Florida. Furman unofficially 57 yards offense as we see a replay of the hit by Odom. The Gators 311 yards and yet only a 14 to 3 score. Furman pops a big play somehow and this game is very close. Huey Richardson makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down for Furman. And they're going to be forced to punt. Gator defense does their job. Three and out. Another chance for the Gator offense to have excellent field position. They looked good on that last drive with the exception of the sloppy pitch and fumble resulting in the turnover. Chris Wade standing in a splash of sunshine. Low driving kick. Monty Duncan swarmed under by six or seven Furman defenders at the 42 yard line of Furman. And here comes the Gator offense again today. They've marched up. They've marched down the field. And haven't been able to put it in the end zone very frequently, thanks primarily to their own mistakes. Matthews will have Mills and Everett. The tight end is split to the right side. The throw is deep for Everett. The pass almost intercepted in the end zone by Mike Jones, who intercepted a pass last week against Tennessee Chattanooga and ran it back 77 yards for a touchdown. Trey Everett almost slipped in front of Jones right there. Mike a bit shaken up. Was all by himself on Everett. Everett put the brakes on momentarily and cut underneath and made his leap but wasn't able to come up with a catch. Now watch him put the brakes on temporarily. He realizes the ball's coming to him. Now he's just going to hesitate for a second and take the inside route. Pass is caught by Kirk Kirkpatrick at the 35. Three yards short of a Florida first down. Kirkpatrick has caught four now in the game. The senior tight end out of Brandon got his first career touchdown catch in the first half of the game. Gators will throw on third and three. Alonzo Sullivan makes a nice catch. Daryl Rogers brings him down at the 20. And Florida has another first down. Alonzo Sullivan does an excellent job right there catching this ball that's drilled at him. Kirkpatrick for a moment thinks it's coming to him. But Sullivan was clearly the primary receiver and does a very nice job. All hands. Doesn't catch it into his chest. He takes it with his hands right there. Big hole up the middle for Rhett. Inside the 15. 
Kendrick, the linebacker, made the tackle. Watch McNabb on the draw lead, the fullback lead. Watch McNabb make the block right here. There he cuts down the linebacker. Everett picks up another three yards. Eric Rett now five yards shy of 100 yards. Randolph flips it back to Matthew. There's nobody open. Now he finally unloads the ball, and Eric Rett makes the catch at the 11-yard line. He was trying to go deep, but Furman had Trey Everett covered in the end zone. Little flea flicker action. With moderate success. This play really never gets going because Matthews is under pressure almost immediately. Big number 71, Crocker, who's played an excellent game, uh, putting pressure on Matthews right after he got the ball. Really never had a chance to look downfield like that play is... Uh, intended to do, give the quarterback an extra look. Raiders have been successful on third down conversions, and they get another one here as the ball is inside the 10. On the carry by yeah, Rhett. Okay. Kevin Michael Kendrick on the stop. Coach, Again, Florida's inside the 10. Coach Spurrier looking for points on this drive. He's not that excited about moving the ball to the extent that the Gators have, that's nice, but he wants to get in the end zone. He wants these guys to finish off the drive, and they've not been able to do that with but a few exceptions this afternoon. It is first and goal. Kelvin Randolph. Tackled by Frank Sutton, the Backup nose guard out of Palm Beach Gardens, number 70. Played at Palm Beach Gardens High School. One of, I think the number is four Floridians on this Furman team. You'd think there'd be more than that. You know, generally every team the Gators play, there's at least 10, 15. Furman does an excellent job oh, yeah. of recruiting right in South Carolina. They really do. They get some of the top prospects out of that upstate South Carolina, North Carolina area. Matthews to the end zone, and it's Ernie Mills with the touchdown. Not bad coverage either by Furman. Jason Grant was right on Ernie Mills. Jason Grant, number 38, the post route. That ball's got a wobble, but it lands exactly where it's supposed to, right between the 14 on that jersey. That's what's, what's so impressive about Matthews. He delivers the football where the receivers have a chance to catch it. And that one, beautiful touchdown. Matthews' third touchdown pass of the afternoon. The extra point makes it 21 to 3. With five minutes and 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Miami Heat tip off their third season of NBA basketball here on Sports Channel with preseason action. Tuesday, October 16th, 7.30 against the Clippers. Friday the 26th, 7.30 against the Orlando Magic. And then the regular season action will begin Friday, November 2nd, 8 p.m. against the Washington Bullets. Ryan Rulin kicks it away. Burns out to the 20-yard line. Marquette Oliver makes the tackle. Let's go down on the field with sideline man Steve Babbitt. Well, David and Jim, I figured you guys want to know what a Furman Paladin is, so I went straight to the source. Something about King Arthur's Court and a knight on a white horse or something. Do I get hazardous pay for this kind of work? Because these fans here aren't very happy I'm talking to this guy. Give me some help down here. That's a big Paladin, man. Or Steve's like he, very little, one or the other. <laughs> he looked like he could go to war. The busk is back in at quarterback. Tremble, nice cut back to the inside across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line. One of the best runs from scrimmage of the, of the afternoon by Furman. Yeah, they desperately need some first downs. They're just having no luck at all moving the ball. They need to put a couple of first downs together, give 
their own defense some breathing room at the least. They've come with two tight ends and two receivers, one back, and give it to Trimble, just running it power up the middle of the 35, and they've picked up a first down, only their fourth first down of the afternoon. I don't think they had a first down in the second quarter. It has been a long time since Furman picked up a first down. Look at the differential and total yardage. The score is 21 to 3 in the third. Pass was almost thrown right into the arms of Fee Bartley, but he couldn't make the catch. Caught him by surprise, I suspect. Yeah, I tried to dump the ball to Carl Trimble, the tailback, and the ball flew a bit on him, and Bartley can't believe he missed his big chance. This ball takes off a bit. The Trimble does a short arm job on it, and almost goes right into Bartley's lap. Gators got it. Carlton Miles, I think, fell on it. Brad Culpepper is the guy who hit Tremble to force it loose. And Miles recovered the fumble at the 43-yard line of Furman. We were talking about Brad Culpepper a little earlier. And I think he is a senior. You know, we were talking about him being such an outstanding performer for the Gators over the last few years. And... He's a junior. Gee, right. I, I pointed that out a little earlier. I've already made that mistake once <laughs> this afternoon. We're trying to take a year away from Brad. Matthews on a play action. Oh! That pass almost intercepted. There's a penalty flag down. The linebacker Beavers almost made the interception. There's a penalty flag back in the Florida backfield. It's going to be a hold against the Gators. Robert Beavers has a shot at this one. Just can't come up with it. But there wasn't a Gator uh, near that football. That was poorly thrown. The Furman sideline. That's their defensive coordinator, Coach Johnson. He's been at Furman 14 years. Uh, Consistency in that staff, continuity. They've added at firm at center field an assistant for Dick Sheridan before taking over as head coach when Sheridan moved on to North Carolina State. Set up the screen for McClendon, looking for a block. Bromley gave him one, but he needed a lot more and just manages the 47 or 8 yard line of Furman. Jason Grant made the tackle, the Furman cornerback. 343 left in the third period. Florida 21, Furman 3. It is young and old. Jammed into Florida Field to watch their team try to get the 3 0 on the season. They're in pretty good shape right now. Try the screen play to the other side, and that pass was incomplete. Coach Spurrier working on his visor on that one. That that play was there. Matthews just throws it in the ground. He just can't seem to get it together. This afternoon he has short bursts of brilliance and then he'll throw one in the ground. You look at the numbers and you'd think he's had an awfully good day, but he has been inconsistent. Kirkpatrick needs about 10 after he catches the ball to get a first down. He carries people with him, but won't get enough. Ball came out of there, but I think Florida kept it. Now, on that occasion, they were hoping he could get the ball further downfield to give someone a chance to pick up the first down, but he rather quickly dumps it off to Kirkpatrick, and that's nice. You know, you get a completion. 
Kirk does a nice job of fighting down the field, but really, that's not the guy they wanted to go to. Well short of the first down, so becomes the punt team. Furman thought they had recovered a fumble. But that was not the ruling, and Jason Haley is back to punt for only the second time this afternoon. Don Clardy is deep at about the 10-yard line. Haley, under some pressure, gets it off. It takes a firm and bounce back across the 20, and Monty Groh downs it at the 21. Gators lead 21 to 3, and we'll be right back. Furman starts this possession at their own 21-yard line, and they fumble. Bartley is there, but the tailback Burns fell on the football. Furman fumbled it on their last possession. That was their first turnover of the afternoon. Here's the new tailback. Freddie Burns, number 28. Just brought him in for that one reverse, and it didn't work. And he ordinarily plays a wide receiver position. Well, they've lined a wide receiver, Stevens, out of the eye formation in the backfield. The pass is overthrown. Stevens lined up in the back of the eye. Number 81 moved in motion out to the left flat area that the bus threw it over his head. Now it's third down. Furman pulling out all the stops here to try and figure out some way to attack this Gator defense. Use three separate quarterbacks, number of different offensive alignments. They've tried two tight ends in a power running game. They've tried to spread out the field and throw it upfield. There's a pass that is caught, and it might be a firm in first down. Brad Stevens with the diving, sliding catch, and it looks like Furman will have a first down. Only their fifth first down of the afternoon. Their second here in the third quarter. Brad Stevens, only 5'9", finds a gaping hole in the middle of that zone coverage. and They'll take a first down. The senior quarterback out of Greenville, Tennessee. On the option. Nice catch by Trimble just to keep the football. He's got pretty good yardage on first down. Out near another first down, about the 42. Well, that's the best two plays back-to-back -back that Furman's had all afternoon. They pick up a big first down on a nice pass play, and here comes their option attack that they've been so proud of over the last couple of years that just had trouble getting going this afternoon, but that's how it's supposed to work. The Gainers' pursuit, though, rushed the busk a little bit, making that pitch, and it was almost a bad pitch. Trimble really saved him. Stockdale, the fullback, ridden down by Huey Richardson. After a gain of about three to the 45-yard line, Brad Culpepper, rather, on the tackle. key plays in the option attack is the quick dive to the fullback. You run the option, run the option, run the option outside, and then all of a sudden you quick hit the fullback. But right there, the Gators uh, held them to short yardage, but it was a first down. Tremble stood up by All-American cornerback Richard Fain, just shy of the 50. Trimble's found the yards tough to come by this afternoon here on Florida Field. Fain uh, hasn't had a lot of action come his way this year. I think people are staying away from his side of the field by and large. Now Jimmy Spencer's the, the new kid on the block, so to speak, at the other quarterback position. Their tendency is to go more at him. Herman needs about six. They get a couple on second down. Brandon and Richard, or rather Gaines and Richardson. 
made the tackle. That'll bring up third down and four for Furman with time running out in the third period. Only 40 seconds left in period number three. This is the first time in the second half Furman's penetrated into Gator territory. Short drop, man-to-man -man coverage, and Spencer makes the interception. Spencer has excellent speed. Keep an eye on him. Jimmy Spencer out of bounds at the six-yard line. Jim, you were just talking about how Spencer has been picked on this season. Furman tried to go at the young cornerback on that play, and they pay the penalty. Man for man, Spencer on Stevens, and what he does so nicely here, he picks up the ball. He sees where the ball is. Now he's got a lot of room down here, but look at Stevens hustling from the back. He makes a little juke. Stevens tries to catch him, but Spencer, with that speed, sprints away, and finally, it's the fullback knocking him out of bounds. The injured, Stockdale. the injured player is Fee Barnley that's being helped off the field. There's Jimmy Spencer, a high school quarterback at Glade Central High School at, in Bell Glade. There's Ephesians Bartley coming off the field. Jimmy Spencer, his first year as a starter for the Gators, had a bit of a shaky experience in the Gators' first two ball games, although he was brilliant on specialty teams, blocking two punts in there. A great defensive play. That's his first career interception. Eric Rett goes down. Nice tackle in the backfield. The linebacker, Coda Suttle, is he was uh, freshman of the year for the Paladins a year ago. And a nice play to stop Rett three yards behind the line of scrimmage. That's the final play of the third quarter with. Florida threatening to score on top 21 to 3 as we go to quarter number 4. <laughs> Capacity crowd at Florida Field enjoying three quarters of football. The Gators 21, the Paladins 3. Florida threatens at the Furman 7-yard line. As the fourth quarter begins, Jimmy Spencer put him in scoring position with his first ever interception for the Florida Gators. And now Shane Matthews tries to put him in the end zone for the fourth time this afternoon. McClendon on a delay up the middle. Benton Bell made the tackle for the Furman Paladins, who probably are not going to win this game this afternoon, but could very well be 10 and 1 at the end of the season. This is the only venture into one single A action of the year for Furman. Official timeout call. Furman's held their own this afternoon. They've benefited from some Florida mistakes, but you'd have to believe that they're at least somewhat responsible for Florida's errors. They're like the fighter that keeps hanging into the fight and won't go down. He can't be put away. He just keeps hanging in there, fighting back, hanging in there, fighting back. The Gators have been down in this position before and have not come away. It's third down and goal. complete to a photographer back behind the end zone. He wanted to find Kirk Kirkpatrick, but Kirkpatrick was covered. Then he decides to go to the other tight end, Greg Keller, but almost forced that ball in there. That was not a wise decision by Matthews, but the ball was knocked away. Matthews to the sideline as Arden Krzyzewski comes out. Try and convert a short field goal. This one would be from 20 yards. It is good. 14-33 left in the fourth quarter. 
The Gators 24, the Paladins 3. Shadows falling on Florida Field late afternoon. Late September. Typical type weather here in North Central Florida. Burns deep as Woolen kicks it off. Burns from the 11. Out of bounds at the 23, 24, maybe the 25 yard line. Del Spear made the tackle. Cornell Tenner, number 20, a freshman cornerback down there on coverage. Well, Furman moved the ball a little bit on their last drive. They had some nice passes. They were working that option. Let's see if they can do it again. Uh, really, their only success of the afternoon was on that last series. Whoa. Brad Culpepper just hammered the tailback a couple of yards deep in the backfield. Culpepper's had himself an outstanding day. That last Florida field goal set up by Jimmy Spencer's interception and return. But not what the coach had in mind after you get that great field position to walk away with three points. Uh, they, the Gators wanted to finish that one off and get the seven, but only came up with a field goal. Not a good throw by DeBusk, maybe fearing Jimmy Spencer over there on the corner who was breaking uh, on the snap. Let's go down on the field to Jimmy, or rather to Steve Bapik. <laughs> you got the name right that time. You know, when Jimmy Spencer made that interception, Fee Bartley came off the field and was hurt, uh, looked pretty seriously. Dr. Pete Delicato looked at his knee, which is always a scare, but it was a bruised left knee, and as you can see, Fee Bartley back on the defensive field. Back up to you, David. All right, Steve Babbitt. Good news. They're down in 12. Fumble. They've ruled this one an incomplete pass. Well, the Gators got a break early in the ball game on a play like that, where it looked like it was a fumble, but they called incomplete. The, the arm has to be moving forward. If the arm is moving forward, it's a pass. No, it's not. No, looks like he was just tucking it away. And the referee was standing right there. Well, it looks like they've missed one on both sides now, so at least it's all even. This is the seventh Furman punt of the afternoon. They've averaged 33.8. Wade unloads this one pretty nice, and Monty Duncan recovers his own fumble at the 41-yard line. Furman, their coaching staff, irate on the far side of the field, arguing that Furman recovered, but it'll go to the Gators first and 10. We'll be right back. Thirteen thirty left in the fourth quarter. Gators are first down from their 41. Brett looking for a 100-yard game. Gets a couple of yards out to the 43 before he's knocked down by Frank Sutton. That Furman sideline is been very active really into this football game and their team has played with great tenacity to stay close to Florida 13 minutes left the score is 24 to 3 Trey Everett the intended receiver but the pass is knocked down by a pair of Furman defenders at the 15 yard line both Quarles was there Quarles was there along with I think that was Jerry Booker, a backup cornerback. They've used an awful lot of players in that Furman defense this afternoon. Booker does get help inside. There's Quarles, number 30, getting over to help inside. you got to have help inside when that guy's running the post route. 
or else you got to be right in his shirt with him. Knock that ball away at the last moment, but good double coverage there. It is third and eight. That will not get a first down. Third down conversions on the last couple of drives just haven't been there. They're going to the short receiver who doesn't have the distance to pick up the first down. Jason Haley out to kick for the third time today. Haley had a severe injury to his left leg just before last year started. That was his freshman year. Well, he was redshirted last season. Low driving kick. Clarney is sandwiched. James Spear was there to make the first hit. And Dexter Smith came on to scissor the return man at about the 20-yard line. Dexter Smith weighs 268 pounds, and he was the first man down the field on coverage. Eleven fifty-four left in the fourth quarter. New Furman quarterback. Damon Bradley runs the option. Ed Robinson runs into Bradley at the 23. You're seeing some new players on the field right now for that Gator defense. The first team defense has been superior all afternoon, and those guys only have so much gas in their tank, and now defensive coordinator Jim Bates is sending out some new bodies. The bus back at quarterback. Fullback Stockdale hit by Carlton Miles and William Gaines. That will bring up third down and still Furman needs seven to get a first down. They have just five first downs this afternoon, 119 yards in total offense. Gator defense just continues to be superior week after week. They were outstanding in Alabama last week and At that time, Trumbull got the first down yardage. James Spears headed for the goal line, but the officials are whistling him to bring the football back. Trumbull was down at the 34. There's the draw. Let's see if the ball comes loose or not. Look at that move right there. Carl Trimble again now. Sophomore who had such an outstanding freshman year for Furman last year from Jacksonville. Tremble is hit by Culpepper and Robinson. Huey Richardson, Mark Murray coming back into the ball game after a short rest. Culpepper just outstanding all afternoon. Quickness. He's playing against an all-conference center, too. Steve Dugan, number 77, getting some All-American recognition coming into this ball game, but Culpepper's working over the guard and the center. The bus, nowhere to go. And down he goes with the 26-yard line. Murray and Richardson. <laughs> what was that? I don't they, know. They did a Chi-Chi Rodriguez and Gary Player handshake. Watch this after the sack. There's Big Huey and Mark. I don't know if we're going to be able to pick it up, but instead of shaking hands, they shake ankles. Now what? Well, they're going to get up and do it. Let's see if we can get it right here. Now they've invented something here. Let's, well, we're not going to pick it up. Richardson came into this game just needing four sacks to catch Alonzo Johnson. There's Mark. Whoa. Screen set up. But Ed Robinson breaks it down quickly. Billy Whitley. 
Furman tailback tripped up shy of the first down, and Furman will have to punt the ball away with 8.45 left in the fourth quarter, and Florida holding a 24-3 lead. Now that Gator defense keeps on giving the ball back to the Gator offense, but the Gator offense just can't put touchdowns on the board. Gators have the rush on again. Chris Wade kicks it high, and it's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. The Gators will have possession in good field position with 8.20 left, and Florida on top, 24-3. to Eight twenty left in the fourth quarter. Matthews throws it to McClendon. McClendon has a first down to the 48 of Furman. Boy, he's a hard-running tailback, big and strong. Put up some unbelievable numbers in high school at University Christian in Jacksonville. It's a throwback screen, David, to the tailback, and Chris Bromley gets out there and throws a block. Mark White gets out there and throws a block, and Willie gets some running room, picking up first down inside Furman territory. McClendon again, cutting back across the green to the Furman 31. Well, at halftime, we mentioned there was two Gator running backs that had a shot at 100 yards in this ball game. One was Eric Rett, the starter, and the other was Willie McClendon, who had been the starter. Two outstanding young tailbacks, and Willie at 223 pounds. Seventy-six yards. Ten yards per carry. Almost 11. Good yardage on first down, and a penalty flag comes in late. That was frustration on Jason Grant's part there. He just lost his poise and decided to take a late shot at one of the Gator wide receivers' head. These cornerbacks and wide receivers talk to each other all day long, and just got carried away there and decided to pop somebody in the head. He hardly made contact, but they saw his intent was evil, and they flagged him for it. Has to have been a pretty long afternoon for Furman's defense. They've been on the field most of the afternoon. Shane Matthews, well over 200 yards. Rolling up big numbers again in the Spurrier offense. Looking to get more. Oh! The pass was intended for Henry Haston. The freshman from Stewart. I don't think he's touched a ball all year. Henry Haston. Highly recruited player out of Martin County High School a couple of years ago. He was redshirted last year. Almost the circus catch. He's wide open. Shane sees him. He just couldn't get turned around to get both hands up. He made the quick turn to make contact with the ball, but only could get one hand up. Wasn't enough to catch him. That pass intended for Harrison Houston. Another freshman again. wide receiver. Coach Spurrier is just so frustrated because the Gators just can't seem to make things work on offense. They're getting close, but they just can't finish them off. One more chance, third and long. They're tired of kicking field goals. They want to get a touchdown. That's what they're thinking in that offensive huddle. Ronnie Duncan, Harrison Houston, Alonzo Sullivan are the wide receivers on third down and ten. The 
pass intended for Sullivan just out of his grasp. The crowd uh, down in that corner of the end zone thought maybe Darrell Rodgers interfered with Sullivan, but there is no penalty flag, and it'll bring up fourth down, and the field goal team will come on. I tell you, the crowd standing right by you thought he was interfered with, too. Darrell Rodgers looked like he held him up on the break, David. Uh, we don't pick it up there on the replay, but it looked like he grabbed him at the moment of the break. And I think that's what the crowd was saying. Hey, he was touched when he was downfield. Actually, he might have been held. But what do we see on the field? Field goal team. Krzyzewski's hit one from 20 already this afternoon. Four out of five for the season. This will be a 30-yard attempt almost straight away. Krzyzewski deadly as usual from short range. The Gators tack on three more. And have a 27-3 lead over Furman with six minutes and 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Be sure to keep up with the Florida Gators all season long here on Sports Channel coming up in the next couple of weeks on Thursday night. Tune in to the Gator Hotline with Steve Spurrier on Sports Channel. And then one week from tonight, the Gators against the Mississippi State Bulldogs in Southeastern Conference action. And then on Sundays, 12 noon, Florida football highlights with head football coach Steve Spurrier. Check local listings for availability in your area. 27 to 3. Only 640 left in the game. That last drive, 46 yards, seven plays. And I am sure that Steve Spurrier will have a lot to talk about with his offense after this game is over with. He'll be working uh, this week in preparation for Mississippi State. As the Gators get back into Southeastern Conference Wars. Ryan Rulin kicks it off and here's Burns from about the five. Burns is hit by Marquette Oliver. Furman will have the ball at about its 24 yard line. Scoring summary on Florida's last offensive possession. Krzyzewski deadly from short range on the field goal attempts. He has now hit five out of six for the season. Furman's only score of the afternoon came after a pass interception that gave the Paladins the football at Florida's five-yard line. They kicked the field goal four plays later. Bradley on the option. Tackled by Monty Groh at the 35. That'll be good for a Furman first down. With the exception of that possession, Furman's deepest penetration into Florida territory has been the Gator 35-yard line. So Florida's defense has not permitted Furman to penetrate the 35. The only time they came inside the 35 was on the pass interception in the first quarter. That's how dominating the Florida Gator defense has been this afternoon. Yeah, they've been outstanding once again. Just frustration with the Gator offense, just not able to finish things off to the extent they want to. Fullback Billy Stockdale on the carry. William Games made the tackle. Good way to make sure you get on camera. There's Jim Bates, the defensive coordinator that came to the Gators from the University of Tennessee. Coach Spurrier was very high on Jim Bates and was anxious to get him in here to run his defense. And they've got a mutual admiration society. And both of them are outstanding coaches. across the 42 to the 43. Furman has really worked hard in this one. They give it all they've got. 27 to 3 the score. With five minutes left. Talking about Jim Bates. 22 year coaching veteran. Linebacker at the University of Tennessee. One-time head coach in the USFL of the San Antonio Gunslingers. Bradley options and tries to get first down yardage. Florida indicates that there was a fumble and they got the football, but we'll have to wait to see about that. Ball was blown dead, evidently. It looked like it did pop free. 
Bradley has gotten outside on a couple of occasions here on this drive, but that option attack has just not had any success getting the quarterback outside. Berman punting for the ninth time this afternoon. They've averaged 35 a kick. Freshman Chris Wade. Raiders have a return on. Wade pops it high, end over end. Nine iron shot. And the ball is out of bounds at the 28 yard line with 359 left in the football game. There hasn't been a lot of doubt about the outcome of this one since early on, but the Paladins have at least kept it somewhat interesting. We have a new quarterback for the Gators, Kyle Morris. Guided the football team through the first half of last season before a suspension. The junior out of Clinton, Mississippi. Did not play last week against Alabama. You saw his numbers in week one against Oklahoma State. Morris gives the football to Kedrum alone. And the freshman out of Niceville, Florida, hammers out about four or five yards to about the 33-yard line. Substitutions in mass. All new bodies on the field and two tight ends. They're going to just run the ball out. Don't want to add to the 27 to 3 victory. Just well, as soon as I say that, they bring the tight end out. Yeah, it crouches the center. Jim Watson, the right tackle. As Morris throws the football to Monty Duncan. Some nifty footwork by Duncan nets the first down of the 41-yard line. Clock running, 3-12. John Williams, number 78. That offensive line now at right tackle. And it looks like Ryan Taylor is the tackle on the left side, number 76. Florida's used 11 receivers 11 different receivers this afternoon nice throw and catch by Morris and Duncan again the Gators have another first down to the Furman 46 yard line that Paladin defense bending and bending all afternoon long but they've not broken a whole lot it's Monty Duncan and Alonzo Sullivan a little earlier showing excellent hands. Gators got good depth at the wide receiver position. Excellent depth. Same combination. Duncan again with a catch. Let's check in with Steve Babbitt. Jim Yarbrough, you mentioned about the team uh, being able to play a lot of different players at wide receiver in different positions. This kind of game, at least, you get to check out your depth. But no question, this team's been flat. It's been evident on the sideline this team has been flat. Something that Coach Spear is going to have to work on during the week as the team gets ready for Mississippi State. Let's go back upstairs. A couple of more home games. Mississippi State and LSU here at Florida Field in back-to-back -back weeks. Malone, the freshman. To the 28-yard line of Furman. We're inside of two minutes, 1.55, and the clock running. Big Ryan Taylor throwing an excellent block right there at offensive tackle. Well, at least when you're flat and you win 27 to 3, you know, it's better than being flat and losing a ball game. Of course, you can't afford to be flat in a Southeastern Conference battle or have the difficulties that we've had today on offense. Now you consider Vanderbilt beating LSU earlier on Saturday. You just can't go out in the Southeastern Conference and not be at or near your best without being in a whole lot of trouble. And uh, there will be those who will wonder if Florida's offensive problems today are not related to the NCAA sanctions that were passed down on Thursday, and it'll be hard for anybody to tell if that was the case or not. Ball club may have been flat anyway. Pass was almost caught and almost intercepted. That pass was intended for Willie Jackson. Right hand 
Could have been a great catch by Willie coming across the middle right there, but just just off his fingertips. Made the leaping effort. Kyle Morris, who I believe is number five in career offense at this point in his career here at the University of Florida in terms of total offense. Saw extensive action in 88 and 89, at least half of 89. Krzyzewski's going to try a 46-yard kick. It appears he's got the distance, but it is no good. Off to the left. That would have been Arden Krzyzewski's longest field goal. But with 1.13 left, the score remains. The Gators 27, the Paladins 3. It has been a frustrating afternoon for the Gator offense. But they got 452 yards. Yeah. That's what they were averaging, 450. But that's not going to satisfy the coach. Bradley very quick on the option. Now tempers flare a bit. Carlton Miles made the tackle. After Bradley got eight on first down. Only 55 seconds left. Take a look at Furman. They slip back into Southern Conference action next week. They've got a big game against Marshall. Always a difficult team to handle in the Southern Conference. So they step back down into their level of competition next week, and you can bet they'll be very competitive. Billy Whitley, the tailback, running the option across the 45 to the 46. And that'll probably do it for today's action. No, I think Furman's called timeout. They'd like to get on the board. By running the option? <laughs> That's optimistic, isn't it? If you're going to call timeout, you might as well let it fly. They did not call timeout. They still have all three timeouts left. Uh, Only 17 seconds left. First down. Stop the clock. Right. Bradley. Tackled by Marquette Oliver, and that'll be the last play of the football game. A valiant effort by the Furman Paladins, but the Gators just too much at Florida Field, and Steve Spurrier, Jimmy Satterfield, Congratulate one another for an outstanding effort on both sides of the football field, but the Gators go to 3-0 under Steve Spurrier with a 27-3 victory over Furman. We'll be back in just a moment to Florida Field on Sports Channel.